Good morning. I um, uh, sat to Amara. I couldn't get it started because she has a lot more energy than I do. We've <laughs> <laughs> been on our feet and excited, but um, hopefully um, I can get us at least a little bit angry at this problem and um, kind of get us ready for, for Pastor McIntosh. So, um, like Peggy said, my name is Dustin Pugh. I'm a research and policy associate with the Kentucky Center for Economic Policy. Uh, we're a nonpartisan think tank that seeks to improve the lives of all Kentuckians through better public policy. We focus primarily on tax and budget issues, but we also research and advocate for policies that protect Kentuckians from harmful practices. The payday lending industry, though it is regulated, is certainly a harmful practice that's hurting our most vulnerable and really needs to be further reined in. So to start, you know, we, we see payday lenders uh, in the community, we, we kind of understand that they're predatory, but I think it's important to understand how they actually work. Um, so in Kentucky, short-term loans that don't require any collateral or underwriting of any kind, um, those are called payday loans, and they can be issued for up to $500, and for as short as two-week terms. You know, the, the typical length of time between paychecks is about two weeks, hence the name. So a customer can only have about two such outstanding loans at any given point in time, no matter which lender he or she uses. The way it works is a borrower will take out a principal and either write a post-dated check for the end of the loan term or give the payday lender access to their bank account electronically. At the end of the two weeks or however long the loan term is, uh, the principal is taken out of their bank account plus $15 per $100 borrowed. More often than not, that means that there's a financial hole left in their bank account that has to be made up somehow. Usually, that's made up by going back to the same payday lender and taking out a loan for the same amount. That's called loan flipping. Uh, that can happen up to 52 times a year, and when you annualize that interest rate, it's 390% APR. Um, so that loan flipping, that back-to-back -back borrowing to keep covering the same hole that the last loan left, that's where the real damage is caused. In fact, the average payday lending customer takes out almost 11 loans per year. Only 1% of all loans issued go to borrowers who only take out one loan each year. So even though it's billed as this you know, quick fix, this short-term solution to your problems, uh, more often than not, it results in a burden to that lender, I'm sorry, that borrower. Although the total principal issued is $718 million per year, which generates $118 million in interest and fees, if we assume that these loans are flipped, so they're taken out back to back to cover the hole that the initial loan left, that effectively results in $68 million in principal for the same $118 million in fees. One major argument that the industry uses is that, you know, this high interest rate makes up for risky loans, that these loans are, are not paid back, and so, you know, high risk should, should you know, create high reward. Uh, when in reality, according to the database where all this information comes from, the write-off or default rate is a third of 1%, so that's three out of every thousand loans go belly up. Uh, that's a better default rate than mortgages or credit cards or student loans. These loans are dangerous products, which is one reason why Congress limited interest rates to 36% on payday loans made to military personnel and their families through the Military Lending Act of 2007. The Department of Defense's rationale to Congress was that predatory lending undermines military readiness, harms the morale of troops and their families, and adds to the cost of fielding an all-voluntary fighting force. So that protection has been extended, like I said, to military personnel who are active duty and their families, but as soon as you're discharged and you're a veteran, you're fair game. That interest rate goes back up to 390% APR. <coughs> right now in Kentucky, there are 483 active check cashing licenses. To put that in context, we'll look at Hopkinsville. So this is a town of about 32,000. And in 2015, they had nine such licenses, which is more than all of the McDonald's, Burger King's, Arby's, Wendy's combined. These are, you know, they're everywhere. They're on every street corner. You know, I was a community organizer before uh, this with my friends from Build who are over here, and they can tell you that just about every summer, like clockwork during BBS, 
painted lenders would roll up with bags full of coloring books and keychains. I see some of the pastors nodding along in recognition with this. Plastic cups. Plastic cups, candy, and they ask the VBS leaders to pass these out during VBS, making it look like the church is endorsing this product. Uh, in Fayette County, just a few years ago, they had to ban payday lenders from coming in and distributing things because they had cups and they had beer koozies and things like that that would have Cash Express on one side and Booker T. Washington Elementary School printed on the other. And they would hand those out to families as they would, you know, come in and out of the front office. Um, I don't think it's unfair to call this industry predatory because they know who their customers can be and then they seek them out aggressively. Veterans, seniors on fixed incomes, those living in poverty who encounter financial crisis, and college students are all especially vulnerable to these loans, which promise that one-time quick fix, but most often settle borrowers with crippling debt. It wasn't always like this. Payday loans didn't exist in Kentucky prior to the 1990s, as was the case in most states. While Kentucky law limits interest rates for all other financial products to a maximum of 36%, payday lenders were able to get a law passed exempting them from that usury limit. Um, this is when deferred deposit transactions were made legal. Uh, the legislature acknowledged that this industry had gotten out of hand when in 2010 some reforms were passed, including the database I mentioned earlier. Uh, but at the end of the day, that wasn't enough to really rein in the problems that we've seen. And so, uh, just last year, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, a federal agency, issued uh, proposed rules for how to fix this. Um, those rules included things like ensuring that borrowers could pay back the loans that they were given, um, which is not required right now, and then still have enough to make you know, their normal expenses at the end of each month, or to rein in things like the number of loans that can be taken out each year, the amount of loans that can be taken out back to back, the amount of indebtedness somebody could be in to a payday loan each year. Um, right now that rule is being considered, but as you all know, the CFPB uh, as a part of Dodd-Frank is a very unpopular agency with both congressional Republicans and President-elect Trump. And there's a lot of question as to not only the future of that rule, but the future of the CFPB in general. Uh, in my mind, that adds a lot of urgency for the need for state action here in Kentucky. Uh, that urgency is compounded with the fact that uh, payday lenders, in anticipation of that rule, have been trying to create new products to get around it. Um, and there's no reason to think why they wouldn't continue to.